So we're here at the American Legion Hall today with the Favaza Brothers. They're giving us their exclusive story of the flag of, that you see on the greasy pole for Friday night's race, Saturday race, and Sunday race, correct? Contest, not race. Contest, contest, that's true, it is a contest. The greasy pole is a contest, the same boats I guess we call a race. That's a race. <laughs> well, thank you, Peter and Tom, for inviting Good Morning Gloucester to um, give the exclusive on your story. From what you've told me a little background, You've been doing this for 14 years, and you've never been interviewed. No. So we feel extremely privileged that you've given us this outlet in your story. So thank you. Oh, we thank you. <laughs> All right, so Fiesta, we are going to be bringing the saint down to the altar today. And novena ended last night. We're going to do one last small novena this evening, and followed by a procession down. So tomorrow, pretty much, Fiesta kicks off. That's right. So it's something we've been doing since we were little, little kids. Our grandfather and our uncle Zabuti, two guys who started the Fiesta almost 90 years ago. So it was passed on to my father, to our cousins, to our uncles, to our aunts. I think you're born into it. Yeah. You're born into it. Blood. Now, now, your process of the fiesta, though, we may be starting here in Gloucester this week, but your fiesta starts many weeks before. Oh, yeah. Well, your preparation. So it's year round. So, you're, you're, so you're a committee member. I'm a committee member. Oh, I didn't know that. So I didn't know that. We have the meetings year round. We discuss all aspects of the fiesta. Uh, we see pull something that uh, myself and Andy Saputo uh, take charge of. And uh, you know, sort of a, a sense of responsibility to make sure it's, it's done right and done with a little bit of structure. Okay. So it seems to be working so far. So our, our grandparents, our, our grandfather, our uncle started it. They passed it on to me, Peter. Actually, they passed it on to my father. And then passed it on to us. And we try to keep it going and pass it on to the next generation. It's, we like to get the younger kids involved in this stuff because as generations go on, traditions fade away, and we're, we're, we take a sense of responsibility that this is something that's in our hearts, uh, something that we've been doing for years, and we need to see it go to the wayside, and hopefully uh, a new generation will pick it up and carry it to the next level. So, Tom, you've kept the tradition, yet the tradition you're talking about is being involved on the committee, because your grandfather was one of the original founders of and Fiesta, he, correct? He was, and committee members, so... You know, they, they asked me a few years ago, and I said, absolutely. So, off we go. We have more responsibilities, we have more things to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, literally going 100 miles an hour during Fiesta. Yeah. And, uh, especially, you know, we can doing all the events, we can organize and everything. It's, uh, it's very challenging to say the least. And it's a big team effort. To, to pull off what the committee does each year for our city and for our culture oh, is just amazing. amazing. Yeah, they, they, kudos to all of you. They do a great job. Everyone pulls together. And the community pulls together, too. Yeah. Everyone does a little something to make this a big thing. Right. Uh, you know, people from Bovina, people do the parade, people do the greasy pole, the single. Everyone comes together and that's how we pull it off. Everybody does a little, and yep. you get a bigger thing. Exactly. So, we're going to talk about um, your contribution to the Greasy Pole Contest. Uh, well, a few years ago, say like 15 years ago, one of my kids won the Greasy Pole. Your son? Not my son. My oh. son was just a baby. Oh, okay. Uh, somebody won the Greasy Pole, I can't remember what it was, but there was a picture of him grabbing the flag, and it was just a, a broken board or a broomstick with a dirty rag on the end of it. And this is almost like the crown jewel of the event. It's the greasy pole uh, in the same board. Absolutely. The, the, the flag. The one comes down the same. Yeah. So I looked at that and said, you know, that kid has a flag up on his wall. Somebody can show his family or put it down to a restaurant, put it in a pub, put it, you know, at the St. Peter's Club, put it someplace that he can be proud of in his bed, his man cave. You don't want to put a rag on that stick on there, so I said, let's make some changes. So me and my kids, uh, they were young at the time, we just started putting stuff together, brought it down, it worked good, nothing elaborate, a couple little flags, uh, they were happy, the 
kids were happy on the music pool, they got something different. And then as years went on, we uh, started getting a little bit more involved in it. Uh, then I realized, hey, I got a brother who's a great artist. Let's call him into the picture. That's when Peter, that's when Peter gets dragged into it, right? Phone calls to our friends in Las Vegas. I wrote a few things down of designs I, I think would work. He meets us together. Uh, he talks to his people out uh, where he works. Yeah, he gives me the idea of what he wants. And then I sit with a graphic designer from where I work. And she uh, manipulates everything the way I want it. Shrinks it, picks a font. We drive each other totally crazy. I leave the office, I come back, and then she has the magic. And there's the finished product. And it's like, when I send it to my brother, he okays it, print it on a canvas, double sided, send it to a seamstress, have the edges all sewn. I mean, we make them nice. They're, and, uh, they're absolutely a I work mean, of art. Yeah, I mean, that is, well. that is a trophy right there. It's a, it's I mean. a trophy, you know, and I hear a lot of guys that bring back their big red flag, but you know what? That was great in the 60s and the 70s. This is the, you know, 2014. Yes. Uh, Use our technology, men, right? These young men who go out there and do this deserve a great trophy to put on their wall. And I, I'm hoping that they appreciate this because yeah. I, I've gotten good feedback, so I'm not going to too with it. You know, two or three people don't like what we do. Tom, are you kidding me? How could no, how could somebody criticize this? Well, we can't please them all. Trust me. All right, we can't please them all. That's enough said, right? I can't make them all happy, right? <laughs> say, right? <laughs> so now, this is what they get. Peter. You, yeah. So we were talking about Las Vegas. Let's just explain to the GMG viewers. Um, you moved out to Las Vegas, and yes. just give a little bit of background and how you're affiliated with somebody that can help you. You oh, know, you know what? The planets line up. What can I say? Uh, I went out there in '83, and I never left. I did uh, all sorts of different jobs. Ended up with the MGM company. Meet up with this girl that. Her so, name? What is her name? Jude. Jude. And she's from Thailand. Jude from Thailand. Lots of thank you. We so thank you. Oh, okay. true, true. Uh, no, and, so and Jude, I explained everything to her, and the only thing she wants me to do for her is someday bring her to Gloucester and, and teach her how to go get a sea urchins. When you bring her, you have to bring her to my house, and Sister Felicia will cook for her. I promise. Okay, she just okay. loves. Like when I cook for her and I show her the pictures of the uni and the Ritzies yeah. and she goes crazy. She goes, I have to come to your town and she, she'll do anything for the fiesta. And I'm anything sure. I throw at her, she, right on board, she makes it, she spends her time, she really does. And she's very tolerant with me because I'm very picky about the sizing of everything and the lineup. And then once it's all done, then it goes to Tom and then he says, go for it or shrink this or whatever. And then we are off to the, you know, we print it right in house. Let's go back to a little bit of the details because I'm noticing um, the pole in front of you, Tom, yeah. has the gold and then the silver. So right. is one designated for Saturday, one Sunday? Sunday? How do you do? One Saturday. Okay. That's how that works. So okay. It's just something different. All right. Um, and how do you how do you determine? I love how you have the red, white, and green. I think that that's great. How do you decide, um, like what, I guess, let's talk about what is your inspiration each year? What do you look for? Is it just something hits you or no, is it I mean, something the last planned? three years, this is what the design is. Symbolic. Like. It's symbolic. It's symbolic of the telling, city and fiesta. Telling heritage on yeah. here, uh, we dedicated the white flag, uh, well, three years ago, our Uncle Matt passed away, uh, Mr. Rocket. He was Ooh. the first guy who ever won the Reese Bowl in the Harbor back in the 30s. See, yeah. this family truly does have a greasy pole history. This Absolutely. is why the Favaz is here telling us this story. So, Uncle Matt won the greasy pole. He passed on. And I called him up. I said, listen, let's, let's put Uncle Matt on the pole. You know, I think he'd love it. Well, we put his face on there. And it went over very, very well. Um, so then last year, Busty Palazzolo passed away. Busty did everything for the Fiesta. When I was a kid, Busty was Mr. Fiesta. Yeah. So we put Busty's face on there. This year we have uh, Sleepy Palazzolo. And yeah. Sleepy was a Greasy Bowl champ, he's a Singing Bowl champ, and he's a Fiesta legend. I was just so going to say, he's a legend of Fiesta. Yeah. And he pa didn't he pass away during Fiesta last year? Last year, I think Sunday or Saturday. Or yeah, Fiesta, right around Austin. Fiesta. So what a beautiful tribute so to the Palazzolo Fiesta. Time, you know, the flags are already made, so I said, you know what, we'll put them on this year. That's great. You know, that's going to be uh, very comforting to the Palazzola family. Um, I gave them to have that. each a flag, a white flag. That's great. So they can have 
Mm, what a beautiful gift. A beautiful so, uh, gift. Hopefully, you know what, it, it goes on. Maybe we'll make some more changes on it. Maybe we'll put a different design on it. Um, we'll see. Whatever gets into my head or his head, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, Tom, you're being very modest and not talking about your Grace of Paul win. You, you um, have. It's a, it was great. I had a great time. What it, year did you win? It was 85. 1985. Ago, it, was a, uh, it was a good grab. I got lucky, got to the end, made a great dive, you know, the rest is history. The rest is history. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's, if you get compliments still today of people saying, well, that's a great, that's a great pitch, it's my favorite, you know, one of the greatest pitches ever to uh, yeah. get the greasy pole flag. My favorite is Mata Sam on the end myself, but, Fantastic you know, photo. It, it, we all compliment each other, you know, it, all the greasy pole walks are pretty Pretty good guys on Sunday when we walked there. We're all brothers for about an hour and a half. You know, we're all we all have different ways of life. You know, so why don't you explain the um, for viewers that have absolutely never seen the Greasy Pole or the history? I mean, people in Gloucester, we know you have to walk for somebody. You have to be a winner every day. There's a different criteria met to be up on that pole in this contest. So, can you just give a little background, like well, how do you get into Sunday, it? Friday. Sunday. Is uh, for the champ. So the first twenty yard walk is a champions dies in the past. So you, you got you know all the way from uh, I think the last one this year, Joey Parmesano, won in 1979, all the way to the guy who wins on Saturday to walk Sunday first. So you have about twenty yard champs to walk, and then after that, the next twenty guys are probably going to be proteges of past champs. Uh, people no longer walk. They come up and say, "I want my cousin, my nephew." I want this guy to walk for me, and that's what happens. Uh, the list fills up very, very quickly, and that's, that's where a lot of friction happens at that point. 